Hey, what's up everybody? Welcome back, Brandon again. Today I want to talk about a brand new bar from Texas Power Bars, which is the All-American Bar. Yeah, I'm talking about so many bars, I should consider releasing a mixtape. But before I do that, I want to tell you about this bar which you see in front of you, which is the first of its kind. No, literally, it's the first one that they ever made. And how do I know this? I want everybody to know this right here is the very first one I made. I tagged it with a rubber band. And I've decided this bar is not for sale. I'm not going to sell it. What we have decided is that we're going to give it away. The winner of the very first Texas All-American bar is Brandon Campbell out of Rhode Island. Congratulations. And as you can see, I got the rubber band itself from Buddy Caps, which is cool for a couple of reasons. Number one, Buddy Caps and Texas Power Bars is kind of synonymous with strength training and powerlifting. In fact, you're probably really familiar with some of their other works like the Texas Power Bar, Texas Squat Bar, and Texas Deadlift Bar, which I just so happen to own and think it's the best deadlift bar on the market, and I do owe you a review on that. But they've been making great bars since the 1980s, and as part of that too, They've largely been a mystery in my eyes because they haven't really embraced social media up until this point. In fact, I don't even think they have a real website. I think most of their distribution is done through other providers. So it's really cool to see them, number one, coming out with a new piece of equipment because their repertoire has been somewhat limited in my estimation. They don't do a lot of things, but the things that they do do are very well constructed and go over very well. But also they just haven't really taken social media by the grasp yet and to see them putting in a lot of effort in is really cool in my estimation. So you should definitely follow them because maybe they'll give away more stuff like more barbells, which I just so happen to be lucky enough to win this particular one. That being said though, however, because I won it does not mean that my opinion is going to be changed based off of that fact. I'm gonna give you the truth about what I think about this bar and if it's worth purchasing. But before we do that, let's take a look at the bar itself and some of the specifications behind it. All right, some quick rundown of the bar itself. It is a 20 kg or 44 pound bar. It's 86 inches in length, a 20 and a half millimeter diameter with 190 K tensile strength. There's 17 inch sleeves on it, but of that loadable is only probably about 14 and a half due to the thicker collars. There's 52 inches from collar to collar, and there's both dual powerlifting and Olympic lifting neural marks. All right, so now that we know a little bit more about the bar, let me share my thoughts on it. But in order to do that, I think it's really appropriate to set the stage at which I'm going to talk about this bar as. So this all-American bar is really an all-around bar, if you will, meaning that it's not specifically good at one thing. So if you're looking for simply a powerlifting barbell, this isn't the best bar for you. In fact, it's not even the best Texas bar for you. That would be their power bar. Or if you're simply looking at doing Olympic lifts, again, probably not the best bar for you. But if you're maybe looking at doing a little bit of both or everything in between, that's when you would start to consider this bar. The common phrase that comes to mind is jack of all trades, master of none. This one really does a lot of things pretty well in my estimation. So talking about the bar itself, talking about the aesthetics, because that's important to some of us, especially me who buys a lot of the same stuff. But I think a Texas bar is a really classic and iconic look. You know it's a Texas bar. You have the black zinc shaft, the bright chrome sleeves, the thicker collar on the sleeves, the recessed end caps, and the non-snap ring design, which is really rare to see these days. So when you go into a gym, I always know if it's a Texas power bar or not just based off looking at it, which is pretty cool. And it's not as uh, well seen these days as some of the bigger manufacturers. So I definitely think that that adds some coolness factor, if you will. But coolness factor doesn't sell barbells all the time. It's about the performance. So speaking of the performance, let's talk a little bit about that. So the shaft itself, black zinc, as I mentioned, it is 28 and a half millimeters. So traditionally speaking, most power bars you'll see are 29 millimeters, a little bit thicker, a little bit stiffer. They usually have PSIs around 205K or 205,000. Olympic bars are usually thinner at about 28 millimeters and have more whip because of that, a lower PSI. This barbell being 20 and a half millimeters is right in between. So again, you can really do either. It's not gonna be too whippy. It's not gonna be too stiff, which I think is nice. Speaking about the shaft again, I mentioned black zinc. When you get Texas power bars or Texas bars in general, Unfortunately, that's really the only option you have. It's nice because they're consistent across their looks. It's bad in some instances if you're looking for a different finish like stainless steel or Cerakote or whatever else is popular these days. You don't really have that options when you're talking about Texas bars. That being said, given the choice, I probably would tend to go with a different finish in most cases just because I have found that over time the black doesn't wear evenly as well. Usually it'll wear a lot more where your hands are. 
Uh, it also shows things like dead skin and chalk a lot easier. So just for general upkeep, I would prefer a more naturally finished type of bar. But that being said, there's nothing wrong with the black zinc itself. Just personal preference in that regard. Taking a look at the neural itself too, this is a medium neural, so it's not gonna be super aggressive like most powerlifting bars are or try to be. And it's also not gonna be too passive, which you might be familiar with other all around bars or in some cases, some Olympic bars where you find your grip slipping or you need to use chalk or straps. This is a nice medium neural. And the fact that I used it for heavy squats, bench and deadlift without the assistance of anything like chalk or straps or having to reset my grip because my hands felt too sweaty, I think is also a big selling point that this is a good neural overall. That being said, with the neural, you'll notice it also has a center neural mark, which I think is imperative for anyone who's looking for pretty much anything. I mean, if you're training, regardless of your goals, you should be squatting, and this helps a ton during squats, and it's not aggressive enough that if you're doing a lot of stuff in a front rack position for things like Olympic lifting, that's gonna really tear up your collarbone area at all. So again, the neural here is good for what the general purpose is. You'll notice it has a couple breaks for ring marks. It has powerlifting ring marks, which are on the inside, I believe 34 inches, and have Olympic ring marks, which are 36 inches. So just two inches of difference, but it can mean a lot if you're not used to seeing Olympic Olympic ring marks on here. Not that it's overly important as they're just more for setting a balanced grip each time and just having a reference point for where you set up, uh, but it does have both options. And the neural does go all the way out to the ends, which again is nice if you have a wider grips for your snarks. That means snatches or jerks. I don't know if I made that up, but I want to copyright that. So snarks, if you're snarking, could be a good bar for you. Not really great if you take wide grips on squats because most people, unless you train in a power rack where you can put the uprights in, you can't really get a wide grip on this anyway. I don't even know if you could see that based off where the camera cuts off just because the post here of the power rack would get in the way. But if you're snurking, you're doing work. Snurking, you're working. I need to get off that tangent. So uh, other things on this bar that I will say, one of the things or the knocks that I see some of the Texas power bars specifically get is the fact that a lot of people say they have a lot of whip. Now, for the most part, depending on how much you lift, I can agree or disagree with that. So if you're squatting or lifting more than like 500 or 600 pounds, you'll probably notice a difference in the amount of whip with something that has 20 and a half millimeters and around 190 kpsi, like this bar or the Texas Power Bar has, compared to a stiffer bar that's 29 millimeters and maybe 205 k or up psi. But if you're lifting underneath that, for the most part, I don't think you'll notice it that much. Again me and my own training for the past week, squatting, benching, and deadlifting, I didn't really notice a ton of whip. I definitely noticed the bar felt a little bouncier on my back when I was walking out on squats, but not to the point that I saw with some of the Olympic bars that I've used in the past, which I'll try to overlay a clip on now here, where I literally thought the momentum from the bar bouncing was going to end my life. So this bar, I can say I was able to squat, deadlift, and bench heavy, and the whip did not negatively impact me. Now, if you're lifting 700 pounds on a back squat, you more than likely are gonna wanna have an actual powerlifting specific bar and not use an all around bar like this for that. So again, that would probably eliminate the risk of whip if you will. I was actually really surprised with the amount of whip or lack of whip on things like deadlift because with this bar, again, being a 28 and a half uh, diameter bar, also having a lower PSI, also having the thicker collars on the sleeves, which pushes the weights out further, I thought there'd be a little bit more whip on my poles, and I was definitely surprised the fact that there was not as much as I was anticipating. So one of the things that I'll do when I do a review of the Texas deadlift bar is talk about that because that bar is number one thinner at 27 millimeters. It's also a lot longer, which means the weights are pushed out even further, and thus you're able to get a lot more whip or bend with the bar. But let's get back to the All-American bar because that's what this video is about. Overall, I would say I was very impressed with it. So for an all-around bar, if you're in the market, I would definitely consider this. Some general things about this is it's not actually released yet. I think it actually releases on July 13th. So if I get this up today, which is July 11th, it releases in two days. They're running a special on their pre-orders of it that you can get it for $299 and they'll ship it for free. So I think that's a pretty good deal. Considering I think the biggest competition or the bar that this is going to compete against is the Rogue BNR 2.0 bar which I wanna say retails for like $292 or $295, and then with shipping being probably about $15 to $20 extra, it's actually kind of right in line with this bar. Um, so it's definitely something can, to consider. Again, you have the Texas history behind it, making bars since 1980. You have the medium neural, you have the center neural, and you have a good looking overall bar that 
will do well for squat, bench, deadlift, or even your snurks. So hopefully that answers all your questions. If you have more, leave them in the comment section below. In the meantime, as always, thanks for watching and stay big.